a successful servant of God. Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. Out of bondage between the two covenants, the first was from Mount Sinai a ministry of bondage and slavery, the second was from Jerusalem a ministry of freedom. The Apostle Paul said he who born of the bondwoman was born of the flesh, and he who born of the free woman was born from the promise. The old had mothers in bondage with their children, and the new is the mother of us all. Also saying bondage is a symbol of flesh, and freedom is a symbol of spirit. He also said bondage is a symbol of death and condemnation while freedom is a symbol of glory. Galatians 4. Jesus discussed this as he ate his last supper at the Passover meal with his disciples, and before he was beaten near death upon the cross. The end was near, bread was a symbol of his body and the wine was a symbol of his blood. His blood represents the New Testament and is also known as the New Covenant. Under which we are justified by his grace and mercy to have true forgiveness of sin. This has been translated. A few terms of the current covenant, Hebrews 8 colon 10 13. 1. God promised, he would put his laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. 2. God promised, he would be to them a God and they would become to him a people. 3. God promised he would be merciful to their iniquities, sins, and unrighteousness, and he would remember them no more. Conclusion Unlike the Mosaic Covenant, the New Covenant of Jesus is intended for all mankind. And the Old Covenant was a shadow, it only covered sin which was unbearable to live by. Jesus' sacrificial death served as an oath or pledge, which God made to us to seal the New Covenant. The fact Jesus rose from death is why we are subject to his divine power. The atonement the oil also known as the anointing of Jesus represents the power of God to perform miracles. It is only through the atonement we receive a specific and unique calling. And it is only through the atonement we receive the anointing. A miracle is an event contrary to the laws of nature, regarded as an act of God whereas the actions or events are usually extraordinary and unexpected. Conclusion on anointing oil, there are two types of oils mentioned in the Bible, regular oil and anointing oil. In the Old Testament, only priests and high priests could anoint with oil. You receive the atonement by accepting Jesus in your heart. Eternal life is not an inherent part of human existence, but it is a unique gift from Jesus. It is based on the resurrection model of Jesus and is perceived as a unique event in which death was conquered. Permitting the human race to experience eternal life, and this eternal life is provided to believers. Communion supper believers have the opportunity to drink Christ's resurrected blood and eat his resurrected flesh, and after that, by faith, come to have a resurrection life within themselves. They are in union with the Spirit of Christ. Accepting Jesus as Savior if you are not saved and trying to overcome an addiction or unrighteous sin. After acknowledging the defilement of your body and how you played life down for death. Pray to him for spiritual guidance through salvation, ask, accept and receive him in your heart. Once you are a believer, he commanded you to get baptized as the picture of a new life in Christ. Matthew 28 colon 19, trust in him today, to visualize the dreams and goals of destiny. Seek his plan of deliverance for your life, confess sins daily and then proclaim him as savior. The things needed are the Bible and other believers for fellowship. After that proclaim him as savior, and witness to others about his experiences and your testimony, to lead others to Christ. Jesus gives gifts to those who rise from the dead ways of life. All of this will enable him to work miracles through you. And he is the only one who can deliver from spiritual death at this present time. Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the entire world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew 24 14, being baptized following the New Testament won't justify you, but it is important for spiritual guidance. Once you trust in him, ask your pastor about baptism. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and, lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him, and lo a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3:16. Going down under the water is a picture of Jesus' death and burial to sin. Rising out of the water is a picture of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Baptism show what happens to a believer during salvation. Because Jesus died and rose to conquer sin, at salvation a believer dies to his old sinful self and is raised to a new life in Christ. Lost souls develop a mind like Christ to lead others, once you love and take care of your body. He is the body of the church as a temple of God, and souls will never die but will live forever. 7 Reasons to be obedient to God 1. Eternal life The Father, Son, and the Heavenly Spirit of God invites you into a life of blessings, compassion, empowerment, goodness, honor, love, and rewards. With intent to naturally obey the will of God. 2. Keep the commandments Although the commandments won't justify unrighteous behavior keeping the commandments is important. 3. Forgiveness of sin By faith ask God's forgiveness of your sin. Whether you are in bondage or not you can be freed from sin. 4. Believe in the resurrection Otherwise by faith your works are dead. 5. Righteous good work By grace you are the Father's workmanship, 
created to do good work through faith. Although by grace everyone receives rewards according to their good works. Matthew 16:27. the fire will test the quality of each person's work, if the fire burns up the work the person will not receive rewards. They will be saved but will suffer loss. This is why any work needs to be righteous good work. 6. As a deliver to feed the church knowledge of the Bible, it represents the presence of the Father. 7. Treasures by faith, your treasures are in heaven, therefore, avoid greed and selfless pride in your daily life. Your desires ought to be the needed necessities for now. Jesus promised the family, house, and land his followers left behind they shall receive it a hundredfold in the world to come, eternal life. Matthew 19:29. How to not have the quality of works burnt up in a fire. 1. Exercise patience throughout trial tests. 2. Choose long-term goals versus a ton of short-term goals. 3. Choose the quality of products, programs, and services. 4. Give God glory for all things. 5. Live a righteous lifestyle. 6. Own the choices you make. 7. Purify the body naturally. 8. Respect others' privacy. 9. Tell the Father your dreams and goals, so they won't be burnt up in the fire. This is also how you envision through him. In this case, the quality of a person's work, not the person itself is automatically tested by God through biblical knowledge. Everyone needs to persevere through bad health to get to the triumphs and victories in life. To live a life full of blessings, dreams, and hope. People giving God glory of all things shouldn't be encouraging others to die to receive products, programs, or services. Although it is nice to have those resources for people who are about to die. Are you successful? The measure of success, God measures success by faith according to biblical knowledge regardless of cost. He measures success how you apply it in your life, and how you accomplish goals with a purpose. His measure of success reveals whether you are loyal to him, and with others in the physical realm. All this shows how you communicate in other relationships, and whether you want mercy from the wrath of judgment. Churches today measure success in terms of faith, dollars, influence, knowledge, obedience, numbers, power, size, and works. Most people illustrate success in enjoying the good life being emotionally and financially secure. Also, being surrounded by admirers while enjoying the fruits of their labor. Whether they achieve goals, acquire wealth, or have money with power. And it is emulated once their accomplishments are noticed. While everyone ought to determine their success by God's standards, it is just defined and measured righteously by Him. Something the world is lacking today with end times lurking near. An example of success in the Bible Jeremiah was an acknowledgeable failure when judged by people's definition of success. For forty years he served as God's spokesman when he spoke no one either listened or responded. He was rejected by audiences, family, friends, kings, neighbors, priests, and prophets. He was poor and underwent severe deprivation delivering God's messages. He was thrown into a cistern while in prison. In God's eyes, Jeremiah was a success therefore, he faithfully and precociously kept going. Eventually, he was acknowledged before others for obedience to God's plan. God's plan is for you to be loyally accomplishing his goals and purpose for your life. The nation's message. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see God return to earth, then you should acknowledge the need for a new living God. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a heavenly father, then you should acknowledge heaven on earth. If you acknowledge the nation's need for a forgiving father, then you should be forgiving. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a generous father, then you should acknowledge how generosity works. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a healing father, then you should acknowledge his tools for healing. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a loving father, then you should acknowledge the need to love. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a merciful father, then you should be merciful. If you acknowledge the nation's need to see a saving father, then you should acknowledge his power to save. Wealth but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swears unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Deuteronomy 8:18. This has been translated. Worthiness heaven was silent at the task of breaking the scroll, no one was found worthy among the saints. The only one found worthy was Jesus Christ, his victory over the power of darkness gave him the ability to break the sealed scroll. Everyone in heaven, hearts were filled as the Lamb who took the sealed scroll. There they fell on their knees and worshipped before him in a song of praise. For he alone is worthy. He alone will bring redemption into the people's hearts with the purpose earth and heaven were created. For this reason and many more, you are worthy of seeking his guidance and knowledge, to walk heavenly and righteous in faith with grace everywhere you go. You are worthy of acknowledging the repentance of sins. Your worthiness allows you to make your beliefs, values, and walk match your words. You can now acknowledge a purpose when setting goals to make progress. Luckily his blood can redeem anyone, anywhere, anytime, and any day. Revelation 5,1-14, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so, shall I be saved from mine enemies. Psalm 18,3. What you are worthy of. 1. 
power and strength, control over your inheritance. 2. Riches, wealth. 3. Wisdom, knowledge of the Bible. A. It is not a matter of your appearance but how you transform. B. It is not the need for a presentation but a direction. C. It is not a matter of perspective but the glory to God in your attitude.